Hi everybody, this is Miss Madeline at the Grout School Garden. And this is our final virtual garden lesson for the year. Thank you so much for participating in our virtual garden lessons throughout this year. I know it has been a different, challenging year. And for our final lesson, we are going to focus on gratitude and hope while acknowledging this strange year and looking forward to next year. We will read a land acknowledgement so we can learn a bit more about the indigenous people who originally cared for this land. And then we will do a simple art project with leaves and flowers to wrap up the year. Have you heard of a land acknowledgement before? Maybe your class has one that you say or read on a regular basis. A land acknowledgement is a statement that helps us recognize that the land we live, play, and work on was stolen from indigenous peoples. And we have an important responsibility to care for this land and acknowledge its history. I am going to read our land acknowledgement and then next year when we are back in the garden together, we can revisit it and learn more about the tribes that I mentioned. We have the great honor of growing this garden on the ancestral lands of the indigenous peoples of Portland, including the Multnomas, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Tualatin Kalapuya, Wasco, Malala, Cowlitz and Watala bands of the Chinook, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. These native people live here now and have lived here in partnership with the soil, water, and living things since time immemorial, before remembered time. We honor the strength and resilience of Native people, and we thank the past, present, and future ancestors of this land. We know that it is our responsibility to show kindness and respect to all living things each and every day. We show respect by learning about Native people, plants, and ways of growing, and by taking care of the soil, water, and all living things in the garden. Let's close our eyes for a moment and take a deep breath to say a silent thank you to the first people to care for this land and make a commitment to continuing to care for this land and this school garden. Our sign language word for this month is community. Our land acknowledgement helps to remind us that our garden community not only includes people, but also all of the flowers, worms, bees, birds, and everybody else who calls this garden home. Insects, animals, and plants all need a community just like we do. They help us stay strong, happy, and healthy. So let's practice the sign for community together. Can you do it with me? Your two hands are helping each other out, just like a community does. Let's remember the word community throughout this lesson. One way we can show we care for the garden is by growing plants for people to eat and for the pollinators and the other living creatures in the garden. Thank you again to all the fourth and fifth graders who shared ideas of what we should grow in our garden in our survey. We will plant as many of those ideas as possible. Some of the most popular ideas that came up were to grow strawberries, carrots, potatoes, and cucumbers. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to grow potatoes and plant more potatoes in our potato bed. First, I'm gonna dig a trench, which is a nice long hole in the soil. Now I'm gonna drop the potatoes spaced out in the trench. And cover them up. So now we'll have even more potatoes in the garden in the fall when we get back to school. And this is what they look like when they start to grow leaves out of the ground. People will eat the tubers that grow from the roots of the potato plants and the potato plants will actually also grow flowers that the bees and other pollinators will collect pollen and nectar from and help pollinate the potatoes. To wrap up our year and this lesson, we are going to take a moment to reflect on some of the hard things from this year. 
we'll call them our worries. And also on some of the happy or hopeful things, our wishes. You can do this activity in a lot of different ways. It's really up to you. The most important thing is for it to feel like a good way to reflect on your own personal experiences. The garden is a great place to turn hard things into beautiful things. We can see this in the way the plants spring back to life after a long, cold winter. And we know that dead plants will decompose and turn into new soil to help feed the new plants. So the first thing we are going to do is grab some paper and we are going to decorate this paper to make it nice and pretty using some plants. So I have picked a dandelion, which there are a lot of this time of year, and a dandelion leaf. And I am actually going to rub this on my paper to rub off some of the color to decorate my paper. And then we'll use this pretty paper to write down our worries and wishes. It's yellow. What color will come from the leaf, I wonder? Ta-da, green from the chlorophyll in the leaf. This calendula flower showed up as a beautiful orange on my paper. I wonder if you can find some different flowers and plants to decorate your paper. Now, on one half of my special paper, I'm going to write down a worry. So something that has been a bit hard for me this year. It could be something about COVID, being worried about our families, not seeing our friends, wondering when school is going to be back to normal again. Or there could be something very different that has been worrying you that you want to focus on. Next, write down something that you are hopeful for. This is your wish. It might be seeing your grandparents again or being able to play with all of your friends at the park or go on a trip or being back at your school garden with all of our garden creatures. You can write that wish on your paper too. Now you can cut or tear that paper in half and take your worry and bury it in a compost pile under some rotting leaves or in the soil and let it decompose. Imagine yourself letting go of those worries and let that feed the soil for new growth. And you can take your wish and bury it maybe alongside a seed or a new plant to represent the hope in new growth. I'm going to plant my wish alongside those potatoes over there and know that it will grow into something beautiful. Or you can just keep your paper as a piece of art and have it be a reminder of the beautiful things that can come out of hard things in life. And know that change and growth are happening at the same time. The garden misses you all and I hope to see some of you here in the garden before the end of this year. Big thank you to everyone who has joined us on this virtual garden journey this year. Here's my last sign language word for you. Thank you. And thank you to the garden. Thank you, garden. Have a great summer, everybody.